This strawberry vase absolutely stole my heart when I saw it online, but instead of spending a lot of money on a fancy decor, I've decided to make my own one. And what's a better material to use for making vase than earth dry clay? I found this shape of the vase in charity shop. I thought it's a perfect and the most similar shape to the strawberry, but you can use any shape and then just adjust it by adding more clay in certain parts. I started with for rolling out flat piece of clay to cover the entire vase. I wrapped the clay around the top and bottom part of the vase. The bottom doesn't have to be completely covered, so I cut the excess clay off. Then I roll out another piece and add it to the other one. Cut the excess off and connect the ends together. It's quite easy to do and if you do it well enough it will be seamless. To create the dance typical for strawberry, I will be using my nail. I was thinking what I can use to create that certain shape and my nail was just perfect. But I'm sure you can use other objects. Just look around your house. Maybe end of the pen or some cutlery part. I create this irregular dance all around my vase. Now it's time for the seeds. Not gonna lie, this was a long process. I tried to make them about one third of the dense size. They will stay securely in place if you only press them in gently. Before I leave it to dry, I go around with brush or sponge dipped in water and try to smooth the surface out. Once it's dry, at first I paint it whole in red. When the paint dries out, I start painting the seeds. I'm going with something between lime and yellow color. It's again a very time consuming process, but relaxing at the same time. For me, it's easier to do this than spending 100 pounds on the new one. To get the shiny strawberry, I applied layer of Mod Podge. Choose the brand of the clay you like. Take quite a big piece of it and roll it out flat. I'm using my new acrylic roller, but I think I prefer my old wooden one. Try to roll it out to the same thickness. This will be a ball, so you can decide how thin or thick you want it to be. I take a round shape and draw the perfect circle. With the damp sponge, I smooth out the edges and the whole surface. I move it inside the bowl. Make sure the center of the clay touches the bottom of the bowl. This way, you know that the new clay bowl will have nice and straight bottom. Bowl shape is done. Now let's make the bowl. 
I cut out the thin strap of clay. I fold it uh, one end to the middle and the same with other end. Try to make both parts the same size. Then cut additional two parts and add them to the center. Cover the middle part with an extra piece. As it's so small, you can just press the parts together and they should all stay secured. To add the bow to the bowl, I make few small cuts on both parts. Add clay slip and glue them together. Leave on the side to dry. Once it's dry, I give it a gentle sanding, mainly the edges. I paint the bowl in white color with acrylic paint. Bowl, I paint in pink. To protect it, I will be using for the first time this varnish from Das. Consistency of it is very thin and applying it reminds me of gloss paint. You have to make small and gentle moves. Overall, the effect is great. It almost creates like a glaze finish. It needs time to dry, so try not to touch it during that time. To create a wall pocket, I take a big piece of clay and roll it out flat to the same thickness. I start with the back part. You can make it as big or as small as you want. The process will look the same. I make sure the edges are straight. Then I roll out another piece which is slightly wider than the first one, but it's about two thirds of the first one height. To connect two parts together, I'm making small cuts along the edge. To make the front piece convex, I stuff it with few tissues and then press all the edges together. Using tool from the clay tool kit, I blend it together. For extra detail, I pull the knife handle along the edges. Before I leave it to dry, I smooth out all the imperfections. It's a wall pocket, so to be able to hang it on the hole, I create the hole. Try to make it exactly in the middle. Once it's dry, I can remove the tissues. I always like to give gentle sanding to the projects. It gives better finish and better for the paint to stick to it. Painting in the color you like. I'm going with beige acrylic paint. I've also applied a layer of gloss Mod Podge. This way it looks more like a real ceramic. Place dried flowers and hang on your wall.
This cute little dish can be used in so many different ways. To make it, uh, I will be using air dry clay. But first, I draw the heart shape on the paper, which I will use as a template. You can adjust the size to your preferences. Next, I roll out a flat piece of clay. I try to roll it to the same thickness all around. I also make it quite thick. I place my paper heart on it and trace lines around it. Then using knife, I cut the shape out. I smooth out the edges and then roll out another piece, this time very long and thick. Before I cut out the strap shape, I make sure the piece is long enough to go around the heart shape. Strap will create the wall of my dish. With the damp sponge, I smooth it out and remove any imperfections. To make the connection between two pieces of clay stronger, I create little cuts along the edges. Then I apply clay slip on these cuts. Clay slip is basically clay mixed with water. When I have some small pieces of clay left over from the project, I like to add them to this fold. I attach the wall to the heart shape piece. I've decided to wrap it around the heart, but you can also put it on top of it. To make it even stronger, I add a thin piece of clay inside the dish and blend it with the wall and the bottom part of it. As it's very soft right now, I leave it for a few hours to slightly dry out. After that time, clay became harder and I can finish the bark of my dish. I simply um, push in the clay slip and smooth it out. I leave it on the side till fully dry. Before painting any clay project, I like to give it a slight sanding. It will remove any imperfections and prepare the clay for paint. At first, I paint the whole piece in white. I know the clay is already white, but the paint will add extra protection on the piece. I want to create a checkered pattern. At first, I draw lines with pencil and then paint it with paint and brush. I wanted to go with more red color, but I added too much of black paint and it came out brown. But that's fine, uh, it will match my clay coasters. 
I also recommend counting the amount of squares. I didn't and at the end I ended up with two brown ones next to each other. I made a mistake so you don't have to. And at the end I apply coat of gloss mod podge. It will make the dish shiny and more durable. This personally is, I think, the hardest project I ever made with clay. I start with kneading a piece of clay with my hands. This will create the part of the holder where the candle goes in. To make it the right size, I take a paper candle and push it in it. I roll it to give it a nice round shape and then straighten the top by cutting it. I place this part on top of another flat piece of clay. I draw on it ends of the bow. It will be one long strap with sharp ends. I roll out another piece of clay and this time I create the bow loops, two separate ones, straight bottom and curved top. I've decided to attach the loops to the back of the center piece. I think this will be the easiest way of doing it. At first I squeeze the ends of it and then blend with the other part. It's tricky to do it, uh, but you have to be patient. Eventually it will create one solid piece. I make a few cuts on the strap, add clay slip and attach other parts to it. I cut off the part of the strap which are coming out from under the loops. And like always I take my little sponge and smooth out the whole surface. Make sure all parts are attached to each other and the clay doesn't have any cracks. Leave on the side till fully dry. And once it's dry, take off the sanding block or paper and gently sand down the whole surface. Choose the color of the paint and paint it. Protect with varnish. Everyone loves candles, so let's make a customized candle set. To create a candle holder, I will use a dry clay. I take quite a big piece of it and roll it out flat to the same thickness. Using cookie cutters, I cut out two different sizes of circles. I smooth out the edges and then roll another piece of clay. With the ruler I cut out nice and straight straps. I take the candle and wrap the clay around its bottom. Remember that air dry clay shrinks when drying, so make the clay strap quite uh, loose around the candle. I only cut as much as I need and then connect 
two ends together. I make small cards along the edges, add some clay sleeve and glue them. It might take a while to make it look perfect. And again, to attach two parts together, I make small cuts and add clay sleeves. To make the connection stronger, I add extra, very thin piece of clay around and blend it, it all together. Clay tools can very handy with this kind of work. I will leave the link to the ones I used down below. I make it all as smooth as I can before I leave it to dry. I repeat the process with the smaller circle. When the clay is dry, I take soft sanding block and sand down the candle holder all around. If you prefer, you can leave them just as they are. I mixed white acrylic paint with drop of beige color. At the end, it's always better to protect the clay with paint or varnish. To create chopping board, I take a big piece of clay and roll it out flat uh, to about 1 cm thick. You can make the board as big or as small as you want. It also can be square or rectangle. Using ruler, I make sure all the edges are nice and straight. Dump sponge will get rid of any imperfections and make the cut smoother. I've rolled out another piece of clay, it's important that it's the same thickness as the other part. Using knife, I first draw the shape of the chopping board handle and then cut it out. For the extra decor detail, I cut out small circle on the top. To connect two parts together, I make few cuts on the side of the board, like also on the handle. A little bit of water and I stick them together. To make it even stronger and get rid of the visible connection, I'm adding small pieces of clay and blend them in with the rest. And gently flip the whole piece and smooth the surface on its other side as well. Going back to the front and I slightly lift the corners of the board up, but you can leave it straight. Once it's dry, which took about two days, I can start decorating it. This piece is only uh, for decorative purpose as Eldra clay is not food safe. First, I paint it whole in white color. I grab some decorative tissue paper and cut out the shapes I want to add to my board. Using a gloss mod board, I glue them to the surface like also I cover the whole surface for the better finish.
I will need a base. I found this wooden one in charity shop which will work perfectly. You can also look for it in a thrift store or create your own one. As I've mentioned before, my coral inspired sculpture will be made out of air dry clay. I take quite a big piece of it and roll it out flat to the same thickness. Mine is about 7 mm. I take my base and adjust the clay size to it. I cut out irregular shape. Following the design, I start cutting out small irregular shapes. I keep about half to one centimeter gap between each part. I covered the whole surface of my clay. At first I've only drew the lines with the knife. Now I'm cutting it deeper and remove the inside clay. Once it's all done, I start squeezing all the edges. I basically want all lines to be flatter. If you want, you can leave the clay the way it is now. I just think the option I'm going for gives this sculpture a more organic look. I check if I like how the shape goes with the base, cut any excess off and continue with flattering the clay. As my nails were too long, I've started using wooden tools and squeeze the clay between them. I make sure the bottom of the sculpture is flat and straight so I will be able to attach it to the base. Once I'm happy with the result, I leave it till fully dry. After two days of drying, I spray paint the clay in white and the base in black. To attach two pieces together, I'm using super glue. I hold it straight for a few seconds, allowing the glue to cure. Modern and abstract sculpture, perfect for decorating your shelves with. I take a big piece of it and roll it out flat to the same thickness, about 1 cm. Take any size bowl you like and draw a perfect circle. With damp sponge, I remove the imperfections and smooth out the edge. To create unique shape of this bowl, I placing small styrofoam balls under it, just close to the edge. You can place more or less balls, depends what result you want to achieve. But try to keep the same distance between each one. After about two days of drying, my bowl is now hard and ready to be painted. But before that, I take soft sanding block and smooth out the whole surface. Pick your favorite color and paint your bowl. You can of course also leave it just as it is. I'm going with pink acrylic paint and to create a checkered pattern, I'm using red sharpie. You could do it with thin paintbrush and paint, but I think marker pen gives you a great result and it's much easier to make straight lines. Dishes like that always have so many applications. You can hold your jewelry on it or keys by the door and so on. You can always protect its surface with extra layer of varnish like Mod Podge.
want to recreate this wall hanging from cedar and hide. I can't see the price on it, but I can only imagine it's very high when this small version already cost $375. It's a beautiful piece made out of stoneware discs. Uh, my version will be made from air dry clay. I take a big piece of it and roll it out flat, very thin. Just a couple of millimeters. To cut the round shape out, I'm using 5 cm cookie cutter. All together, I will need 58 identical circles, but I cut two spare ones just in case. On each one I create a little hole for the string. I leave them to dry. I will turn them halfway through. It will make the drying process quicker and is less likely for the clay to crack. Once they are dry, I start painting them. I keep same colors as the original piece as I really like it, looks modern and elegant. Luckily, I have many paints in grey color as I was buying the samples before painting my bedroom. But creating different shades of grey is not that hard anyway. You just have to change the proportion of black and white paint. I take one color at a time and paint about five discs, then change the color. I only paint edges and one side. You can paint both sides if you want, but the other side won't be visible anyway. Once they are dry, I put them into a composition I want them to hang. All together, there will be seven rows. The longest row will contain 10 discs. I don't put all blacks at the top and all light grey at the bottom. I try to mix them slightly. I have this piece of wood where I will attach all my discs to. I take macrame cord and start pulling it through the holes. Wrapping small piece of tape uh, at the end of the rope helps to push it through the hole. To secure disc in place, I make small knot at the back. Every time I add new disc, I push the coat through the hole from its front. I also slightly overlap the discs. For better finish, I add a jute rope to the wood and then tie the cord to it. The problem which came when I tried to hang it was that all discs were sticking out too much. To solve the problem, I glue the rope to the back of each disc. Just a small drop of hot glue was enough to make those discs clay flat and straight. Thank you. 